welcome to our special edition of Central News. We're here at Field Days 2013. In 1969, the first ever Field Days was held at Te Rapa Racecourse. An estimated 15,000 attended. Fast forward 45 years, and it's predicted that this year's numbers will reach over well over 100,000. We'll be bringing you the best of Field Days 2013 over the next couple of episodes. Later on in this program though, we will be discussing with the Minister of Primary Industries, Nathan Guy, what the Ministry's take is on this year's theme, getting down to business in the global economy. But first up, right now, let's chat to some exhibitors. Now Neville here from Last Strike Shoes is actually making leather shoes on site. Now Neville, tell us what you're doing there. What I'm doing here is um, pulling in the lining, um, for either a steel toe or a soft toe so it doesn't interfere with the internal side of your foot. So these are a composition um, lining which is uh, what they call a stitch bond which is double stitched basically. It's really really strong and I'm going to bang. Go. <laughs> so is this your guys first year at Field Days or you've no, been a couple of times? I've been here seven years now. Um, and this is the first time we've made on the site, yeah. Yeah, so it's interesting. And has there been lots of people interested in your uh, first shoe there? Uh, well, they come and go. <laughs> now we're here with Quinton from Mickey Thompson Tyres. So tell us, how's the exhibition go uh, the exhibit going so far? Oh, it's going really good. We've had uh, heaps of inquiries. I guess with the wet weather coming on, it's a bit of a requirement at the moment to have a, a good traction tyre that. Uh, Will um, will last the you know the time and the distance and um, got a few got a few cars on display. We've got the serious off road tyre um, vehicle there and we've got the uh, uh, Rod Millen's Tundra on site as well. So um, yeah, it's it's going pretty well. So we're here with Steve from Yamaha. So how Steve, how is the exhibit going today? Well, we found it very good, Hillary. Um, in comparison to where we've been last year, we think the flow of traffic's been quite good. We've redesigned the whole stand. Um, last year we just had a bit of a, um, a walk through in the front. This year people have got to come right through the stand and of course the big thing from our perspective is that we have a major unveiling happening tomorrow. Um, the, a particular unit that will be available later in the year in New Zealand but this is the first time it's being unveiled in the whole Southeast Asian rim so it's uh, pretty exciting from a Yamaha perspective. We'll be back after the break when we're speaking with the Minister for Primary Industries, Nathan Guy. If you have just joined us, welcome to Central News and our special edition here at Field Days 2013. Now if there was a ministry in charge of agribusiness, it would be the Ministry of Primary Industries and we spoke with the Minister, Nathan Guy. Welcome to the Programme Minister. Now the theme is getting down to business in the global economy. What does that mean to you? Well our farmers and producers are very good exporters. We export to around 200 countries around the world. We feed about 40 million people. So this is an opportunity over this week here at Field Days for them to come and engage with some of the exporters, some of industry players that will help drive their businesses going forward to ultimately reach the export double target that we want to see achieved by 2025. The dairy sector has predicted that they'll need over a thousand tertiary educated people to fit growth projections. How will your ministry encourage that? I think there is an awful lot happening at the moment to attract students to come into primary industries and my view is we need to do more. And I reckon just little things like the breakfast in schools where you know milk is flowing through now to every child if they want to consume it, that is a very good starting point for youngsters to realise that actually milk doesn't just come from the fridge, there's a process as to how it gets there so that's an important part. Agri-kids is another one so that's the, you know, the young farmers type model where they do a whole lot of exercise involved around what would normally take place on a farm so that gets them involved and enthusiastic about thinking shivers this farming could be exciting for me. I reckon we've got to do more to attract younger people into what is such a big and important part of the New Zealand economy. So how will the government encourage that? So at the moment I think there's an opportunity for us to be working closely with our careers advisors. There's an opportunity to even showcase more what's happening with the ITOs. Of course we're just establishing the Lincoln Hub which is going to have 
uh, the best scientists in the whole of New Zealand down there. There's an opportunity to attract more of the youngsters to come and study at Lincoln, which is going to be an important part of our extra growth potential in the future. Of course, we've got wonderful universities like here, Waikato University and Massey that I went to. So there's an awful lot happening in that space. And let's not forget the likes of uh, Taratahi and Telford where our students go along and they're running programs now where they're attracting uh, teenagers to come just for a few days to get a taste of what it might be like to work on a farm and that's proving hugely successful and encouraging them to stay longer and then participate in some of the training that's involved. So can you tell us about their 80 million dollars in funding for regional irrigation? So we've just come through probably the worst drought in the last 70 or so years and of course we don't have a water shortage issue in this country, we have a water storage issue. We only collect and store about 2% of the annual rainfall, most of it just roars out to sea. So if we can encourage more of these regional water storage projects to get up and running that's got to be a good thing. And the reason it's a good thing is it's good for regional economic jobs, uh, it's also good for the environment as well. Now we realise there's about 400,000 hectares that aren't under irrigation that could be. And so the government has said there's $400 million to get some of these projects up and running. $80 million announced in the recent budget. We're setting up a crown controlled company to make the decisions on who's successful uh, receiving some of the government support. The government's view is we want to be in early and out early. So we want to get these projects started and then see the private sector and other funds come in to sustain them in the longer term. Currently the agriculture sector brings in $25.3 billion, but consumers are prepared to pay five and a half to eight times that much when it gets to their plates offshore. How can we look at capitalising that on that and putting it into New Zealand hands? Yes, we're doing a lot of work in that space. Of course, we feed about 40 million uh, people around the world. We export to a couple of hundred uh, countries and uh, by and large there's a lot happening in that space in terms of adding value here, both inside the farm gate and also in our processing uh, plants as well. So we've got the primary growth partnership uh, that's up and running. We've got a lot of food based projects on there that's going to add value through the supply chain. Uh, farmers are innovators, they're great at adopting new technology. You'll see that here at the field days where we've got some of the best in inventions created every year. Some of those get picked up and roll out into the commercial marketplace. So we'll continue to see a lot of involvement in terms of innovation and technology. There'll be a lot more value added in time. If you just think about logs, you know, an important market is China. We can add more value to those logs. The Christchurch rebuild, all of the residential rebuild required in Auckland and some of our other cities is going to help. So there will continue to be more added value. If you just look at what's happening in meat, there's a huge amount happening there. More petite cuts. Um, highly valued, uh, packaged well with the New Zealand brand, of course the consumer likes that and so we're going to be, continue to see innovation play a major part. What are some of the main benefits on the strategic plan on promoting cooperation that you signed with China? Yes, China's a very important market to New Zealand exporters. In fact, it was our biggest market uh, in the first quarter of this year. It surpassed Australia. It's worth about $7 billion now. And Minister Hahn, the Agriculture Minister, he was down recently. He and I signed this uh, cooperation agreement. There's quite a bit in that agreement. It just means that we're going to work closer with China. China needs us, we need China. We can collaborate on a whole lot of areas, whether it's market access, whether it's food security, whether it's biosecurity. All of those issues are covered off in what is a very close working relationship that we have currently with China, and we'll see that uh, continue to build. People can now start to apply for the primary growth funding. What has been some of the successes of that? So Primary Growth Partnership has been up and running for about three years now. There's about 13 projects underway. This has been an investment with government and industry, about 658 million invested. 
um, partnership with the government, normally 50-50, about a $7 billion prize by 2025 in terms of all this innovation that's happening, that's year on year thereafter, so hugely exciting, whether it's a guy who's invented a digger down in Nelson that'll work on slopes of about 40 degrees with a chainsaw on the end of the boom, so there's no chainsaw on the operator's hand, there's no one on these steep slopes with a chainsaw, operates it from his cab, felling trees, a lot more efficient, uh, huge difference in terms of health and safety as well. So that's just one example that could lead on to export potentials, there's many others as well. Coming up next we find out how Field Days isn't just about selling goods, there's heaps of entertainment here as well. Welcome back to Central News at Field Days 2013. Now, celebrity chef Josh Emmett is cooking up a storm and hosting the cooking demonstrations here at Field Days at Kiwi's Best Kitchen. It's something you might not have known about the Master Chef Judge, as he grew up here locally in the Waikato. So, how does he find cooking with fresh New Zealand produce and meats? Welcome to the show, Josh. Now, you have cooked all around the world. How does New Zealand produce compare to the rest of the world? I think it's always been good um, and, and, and more than anything now I think it's been handled better because there's a big difference between something that is, that is good initially on the land and then something that's transferring into you know, supermarkets or into kitchens and that sort of thing. It is the handling so it has been handled really well. Um, it is staying, there is a lot of produce that's staying in New Zealand as well which is quite good um, rather than all leaving or, or whatever. Um, but in general, amazing. I mean, you know, what's not to like? There's, you know, but I used I used uh, New Zealand venison in London. I used New Zealand salmon in London. I used New Zealand mussels, New Zealand kingfish. Uh, what does that say? Is there something unique about Waikato produce that you really like? Um, I was brought up in the Waikato, so I was brought up sh shooting rabbits. Um, we were on, from a beef farm. I think you know, you look around at the landscape, and I think um, the food and, and what's grown here is reflected by what the area is like um, and it's, it's it's pretty clean it's a nice uh, landscape and I think that is reflected in the food. You did train in Hamilton so did they give you a point of difference for your career? Oh I'm pretty grounded I think more than anything training in Hamilton means you know that, I, that I'm I, originally I'm from Nahanapuri um, and I, I trained at Waikato Polytechnic and then moved on um, to, to work on all sorts of places in New York and LA and London and Melbourne um, you know, very grounded, very, you know, we're Kiwis, we're, we're, we're honest people um, and we've got a bloody good work ethic, haven't we? So, solid people. You have been coming to Field Days for years, what are some of your fond memories? I mean, I used to come here as a kid, I came here from the ages of uh, sort of five to about 13, I would say. Um, I was here every year, um, my, my father was in a Lions Club caravan cooking burgers. Um, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a haven for kids, I think it's an amazing place for kids. You know, there's tractors and, and bikes and horses, you know, all manner of farm life. What kids don't like farm life, even the city ones love farm life. So, you know, we just roamed around and, and cut loose really and had a really good time. Did you ever imagine that you would be hosting an event at Field Days? No, I never thought that and, and you know when I was, it was a bit of a no-brainer when I was asked to come back, you know, and, 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 and host this kitchen event, uh, which is great, it's, you know, it's, it's good to be back, I haven't been for so many years, um, you know, and it's a massive event and it's, it's still here and it's been growing and growing, so that, I think that's great. Has your rural upbringing influenced your cooking? Yeah, 100%. Um, it really has influenced my cooking because I, and I've just written a, written a cookbook which comes out later on in there but that really made me think about that um, and you know growing up on a farm hunting, fishing um, and, and you know rabbits and ducks and quails and, and, and everything else um, you know when I naturally went over and started cooking overseas that's what I w wanted to cook that's and I still my favorite things to cook these days it, that I've cooked all over the world are things that produce like rabbits quails ducks foie gras um, you know fish and shellfish really nice fish and shellfish so it's just a total reflection of my upbringing you know 
to do you debone all your own meat and fish? Yeah, yeah. And I take pride in the fact that I can butcher pretty much anything. You know, I could do a whole cow, I can do a whole deer, I can do a whole lamb, I can do a whole rabbit, I can do a little quail, you name it. Um, I can pull it to bits and, and, and give it the send off it deserves because that's what it's about as well. You know, it is about respecting the produce um, and understanding it and the ability to use all different cuts for all different um, manner of dishes. So tell us about what you're doing here at Field Days. Yeah, so I'm doing, uh, we have Chef Series, which is my take home uh, meal range, um, which is, a, which is a, 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 something that we launched about a year ago. It is, it is made for people who like take home meals. It is even better made for people who don't like take home meals. Um, because because it is, it is a sensational product, it's full of flavour. Uh, and then I'm also doing um, lots of demos. So I'm cooking, this morning I did, um, I did a, a lovely snapper dish, I did a quail dish, I'm about to do a rabbit dish, I'm also going to do a beef dish this afternoon, so lots of things like that. And I suppose farmers here at Field Days will be able to source those kind of meats themselves. Well that's why I thought I'd stick to that angle. Everyone in New Zealand seems to have snapper either given to them or they're catching it or whatever else. So they need a few things other than just breadcrumbs um, and a bit of lemon on the side. Uh, quails, you know, you don't want to shoot them if they're in the garden, but uh, you, you get good access to quails. There's rabbits, there's loads out there. We should be eating more of them because they're, they're a great product to eat. Um, and I've got really doing a really nice beef sirloin dish. So. Well, thank you very much, Josh, and all the best for the rest of your series here. My pleasure. Have a great day. Well, that was definitely one of the events to check out this year at Field Days. Coming up after the break, we chat to one of the brains behind organising the biggest angry event in the Southern Hemisphere. Welcome back to our special edition of Central News at 2013 Field Days. Since 1969 it has been one of the premier events for agribusiness in the Southern Hemisphere. And it is the 45th year and it is the last year for the President of Agricultural Field Days. 45 years, let's see what some of his fond memories are. Welcome to the programme Lloyd. So, getting down to business in the global economy, what does it mean to you? Well it means to making it easier for farmers and businesses to do business in a global economy. And what I mean by that is, is that the, you know, the global uh, influences on New Zealand is huge and just with the exchange rate, interest rates, commodity prices because we have to export and so it has a huge effect on our um, on our agricultural businesses, you know, as in the um, exhibitors and the farmers. So to, do, to, to be able to do that we need to be more efficient and we need to have new technology to be at the cutting edge of, um, of efficiency and technology. That's why they come to field days to see that technology. And how do we go about doing that? Become more efficient so we can weather the storms better. And this is where field days comes in because that's where the technology is. How long does it take to organise field days? 18 months. So you guys actually started organising field days over a year ago. And that's, that's what we've got to do more of. We've got to, instead of thinking, oh gosh, we're going to be doing that this year, um, we've got to think, hey, we're not going to be doing it for 2013, we're going to be doing it for 2015. Because we, can't, we haven't got enough lead-in times and we get things, too many things left to the last minute. This is your last year as President. Why? Well, it's in our constitution that we can only stand for three, be a president for three years. Um, and, and then there's immediate past president for one year. And from then on, I, I'll be gone. Because we can only be on the board for 12 years. We've changed the constitution at the last AGM, so we made it so you can only be a board member for 12 years. What are some of your fondest memories of your days? Oh gosh, there's heaps, you know, I mean, you know, there's been a lot of things, a lot of funny things, you know, like a guy rang us up one time and said, hey, my brother-in-law's coming in a hold in Kingswood, could you can please keep an eye out for him, you know? <laughs> and I don't think he realised that we had a few thousand cars to deal with. <laughs> so there are a few funny things, but I mean, you know, it's the people that we mix with, that's what. You know, if you surround yourself with good people, you can do anything. What do you think have been some of your greatest successes as president? Well, I used to say um, when I was Ag Field Days chairman, 
uh, bigger, better, brighter, bigger meaning bigger uh, event, uh, better, better to do business between the, the people coming through the gate and the businesses or the exhibitors and between exhibitors too, you know, because they do do a lot of work between themselves, you know, it's a networking function and brighter meaning that we need to have the people uh, wanting to come to field days because it's brighter and something different. And the other one was is field days goes global and a lot of people thought I was going to run field days offshore but it was nothing to do with that. A lot of our exhibitors are exporters and a lot more would like to be exporters if they had the um, um, you know the, the what do you call it the money and the expertise to actually do that. So we can facilitate that and this year we've got 22 uh, overseas delegations coming and there's about 700 overseas business, visitors here at the present time. So my dream of Field Days Goes Global is happening. And how did you encourage that better selling between exhibitors? Oh well, uh, what I would like to think is, is that we just reduce the, uh, the rules and regulations of our exhibitors, you know. I mean because we're such a big organisation and we have a thousand exhibitors, I mean it's very easy to get tied up in bureaucracy and it just doesn't, it, they, it, they just don't feel good, you know? And so we need to uh, work on that to make them feel more wanted, if you like, and, and give them facilities to be able to sit down and have a cup of coffee and do a deal or do business, you know? So when on Saturday night you ride off into the sunset as your last year of president, what will you do after that? I don't know, I mean, I, I'm still actively farming and I've got a few hobbies, you know, I'm a bit of a backyard beekeeper and I do a bit of wood turning and, and, um, and I still do a bit of farming, you know, I don't milk cows anymore, I mean, they don't ring me before seven and they don't ask, ask me to milk. So, because um, they reckon, that, my son reckons they wouldn't come home on a Sunday morning if they knew I'd get out of bed and milk the cows. But, you know, there's other things to do, isn't there? There's always something to to find it, you know, it'll come up. You don't know what's around the corner. So you'll be back next year though? Yeah, I'll be immediate past president for next year. And then I'll probably just still be hanging around, you know. And they'll give me a job because they'd probably rather have me in the inside looking out than the outside looking in. And what have been your plans for today and the rest of field days? Well, I've, I was here for a KPMG breakfast this morning. Um, and then I had a media interview with a, a, a rural newspaper and then we had the opening ceremony and then we had the president's lunch and um, I've been going thr through some of, the, some of the sites making sure the exhibitors are happy and if we're doing a good job for them and now I'm talking to you and then after this we've got another function tonight I've got another breakfast in the morning and another function at lunchtime and another function in the, at night. So that happens for the four days. In fact, it started on Monday and it doesn't finish until midnight on Saturday. That is our programme tonight here at Field Days 2013. Join us tomorrow night because we will be here again and Amy is chatting to some rural bachelors. Now, if you would like to view this episode again, you can view it on tvcentral.co.nz. We also will be putting it on Facebook and we'd love to know your views about tonight's episode and tell us what your favourite part of Field Days is. I'm Hilary Entwistle, have a lovely evening. This has been an Alpha Media production, a division of Television Media Group. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.